Welcome to TK's Two Cents. Today we're going to talk about laughing at yourself and learning like your life depends on it. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. People who can't laugh at themselves will always be outwitted by people who can. There is a concept called dark ecstasy, and it refers to people who feed on negative energy. We've all interacted with people like this before, people who are very good at pushing other people's buttons and ruffling their feathers. They're almost geniuses at knowing how to size people up and sniff out their fears and insecurities. And then they know how to say things in just the right way at just the right time to get people all riled up. These are people who derive their pleasure and their joy and their satisfaction from making others feel small, perhaps because it makes them feel powerful, or maybe it helps them cope with that underlying sense of powerlessness that characterizes their lives. Your greatest line of self-defense against such people is your ability to not take yourself too seriously, your ability to laugh at yourself. In fact, I believe that the ability to have a sense of humor about your flaws, about your imperfections, is the foundation of self-respect. I don't believe you can properly love yourself until you learn how to laugh at yourself. So let's talk a little bit about attention. I want you to think of attention as being analogous to money. If you give away your money to a person, it doesn't matter if you do that out of spite or out of joy, because at the end of the day, you're giving them your money and they can now do with that as they please. Well, there's something similar going on with attention. When you give people your attention, you give them your attention. It doesn't matter if you give it to give it to them out of love or if you give it to them out of hate. They still get to have your psychological energy. And the entertainment industry, mainstream media has mastered the art of gamifying people's attention. I was reading about this uh this movie promotion and these marketing directors were talking about how they wanted to promote this movie. And so what they did was they bought a bunch of ads first and the ads weren't really getting attention, but then they made a bunch of phone calls complaining about the ads saying, oh, these ads are just disrespectful and no one wants to see a movie like this. It's, 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 it's offensive and so on. And they created, they literally manufactured their own controversy around their own ads. They posted ads and then they called complaining about their ads and they got their own ads taken down. And once those ads were taken down, then they begin to write articles and blog posts and do podcasts about how they're being persecuted. And all of this garnered so much attention that people said, well, we got to go see this movie. We got to go read this book. We got to go understand about it. And they won. They generated controversy in a way that garnered people's attention. And there are a lot of people that are really good at doing this. And so when you have people in life that try to troll you or trigger you, they do so because they want to feed on your attention. And when you get defensive and you get really angry and you give up your peace in order to give them a piece of your mind, they still win. But if you want to know how to extinguish the fire that those people try to start in your life, the best way to do it is to laugh at yourself. The best way to do it is to become better than any of your critics at making fun of yourself, to become better at pointing out your own flaws and owning your imperfections than any of the people who feel joy in doing those things for you. Because people like this, people that are practitioners of dark ecstasy, they're not pointing out your flaws and imperfections in order to make you better. They're pointing them out in order to make you squirm, in order to make you beg them for their approval and their attention. And once you do that, they have all the power. So one of the best things you can do in life is learn how to not take yourself too seriously, learn how to laugh at your journey, laugh at yourself, because then you steal all the pleasure and power away from people that get their kicks by making those around them feel small. And this has applications, by the way that go beyond not letting other people manipulate you. This also applies to any aspect of personal and, and professional development. The only way to develop skills in life is to be willing to make mistakes, be willing to do things that might cause you to look incompetent for a time. And the only way to become smart, the only way to learn new things is to ask questions that might make other people 
see you as not being so smart or to ask questions that reveal your ignorance and your need to know things. And so the ability to laugh at yourself de-dramatizes the mistakes that you have to make, the questions that you have to ask, the ignorance and incompetence, incompetence that you have to display in order to become a better version of yourself. And the person who has a sense of humor, who doesn't take themselves too seriously, they become very quickly the kind of person who develops the skills and the smarts necessary to succeed at life. So give up the need to always appear cool, always appear smooth, always appear in a position of power, in a position of control, in a position of no, and that will make you trigger free and it will make you the kind of person who can develop any skill that you need to develop in order to create the results that matter most to you. Make room every single day to look back on the day and find one thing that you did or said that's worth laughing about. One of the most powerful spiritual practices you can incorporate into your life. Let's go to tweet number two. Self-directed education is the best form of self-help I know. It's hard to feel hopeless and curious at the same time. If you want to live fully, learn feverishly. So I like to think about motivation in a manner that is analogous to financial investing. Motivation is the product of making continual investments in your psychological well-being, continual investments in your mental health. Now think about this financially. If you have a bank account and you go to that bank account on a day of need to make a withdrawal, what you are able to withdraw will be the byproduct of what's in the account. And what's in the account will be the consequence of what you put into the account. And if you didn't put anything into the account, well, when you need to make a withdrawal because of a desire to go buy something, you won't have anything there waiting for you. It's the same way with motivation. Motivation is not the product of willpower. It's the product of the investments that you make in yourself ahead of time. And so you have to have the ability to be honest with yourself and anticipate future days of hopelessness. There are days of hopelessness that lie ahead and you wanna anticipate those days and you wanna prepare for the inevitability of those days by making investments today in the kind of knowledge that's going to help you overcome the hopelessness that awaits you at some point in the future. Hopelessness is an education problem. If you talk to anyone that feels hopeless, or if you listen to the kinds of things that you say when you're feeling hopelessness, it's really the result of feeling like you have already tried everything there is to try, you've already heard everything there is to hear, and there's really nothing worth doing. There's nothing worth getting out of bed for. There's nothing worth working hard for. There's nothing new that's worth trying because, you know, I've already heard it all. And even if you're presenting something new to me, I mean, I can give you a thousand and one reasons for why that's probably not going to work for my situation because I just know too many things about my situation and I've tried too many times to get things going and nothing works for me and I already know that. When you feel hopeless like that, it's due to a kind of overconfidence in what you know. It's a kind of failure of imagination. It is the product of one's sense of curiosity being stagnated due to a sense of, yeah, I've already been exposed to all the information. And so by making investments in your curiosity, you can stave off future hopelessness by continuing to challenge yourself to expand your understanding of the universe and your place in it, you can become the kind of person that is naturally, organically motivated because you're always learning. And when you're always learning, your sense of possibility is increasing. And that is your greatest asset when you encounter problems. Because when you encounter problems, you either encounter them as a person who thinks they know it all and they've tried it all, or you encounter those problems as a person with a big sense of imagination and you can say, oh my gosh, there are already more ideas than I have already been exposed to. And I am never comfortable giving up on solving this problem because I know that I don't know everything and I know there's a lot out there to learn. And by having that sense of curiosity, you learn to look at your problems with a sense of, hmm, this is interesting. I wonder what information out there, what insights out there can help me cope with this rather than looking at those problems as, yep, 
here's another piece of evidence that reinforces what I already knew. And so you don't necessarily need to read motivational books. I love those things, but you don't need to read motivational books in order to be motivated. You just need to have the daily habit of learning. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson said that one of his guidance, guiding principles in life is that he chooses to live each day with the aim of learning at least one new thing. My challenge to you would be to become a smarter person today than you were yesterday. Make sure that the person who goes to bed tonight is smarter than the person who woke up this morning. You have one thing that you need to be able to teach yourself today before you call it a day. And you can set aside 10 minutes every day. You, you can go on TED, for, the, for instance. You can go on YouTube and you can pull up TED Talks. I mean, there are so many of them that are like 10 minutes long, right? And, and I already know that TED Talks don't make you an expert, but that's not the goal. The goal isn't to be an expert. You got to get over that. The goal is to learn something new. The goal is to open your mind in a new direction. And you can just pull up a talk and it's great if you can pick something that is maybe unfamiliar to you, something that you haven't already mastered. You see somebody giving a talk on botany. You see somebody giving a talk on economics. You see someone giving a talk on technology. Take aside 10 minutes and just consume that content because you'll begin to learn cool new perspectives and new interesting ways to look at life. And those things will be your greatest asset on days of hopelessness. Study things that are interesting to you. Study things that are unfamiliar to you. Study things that are new to you because the more you expand your understanding of life itself, the more effective you will be at coping with the challenges that life throws at you. Even if you don't feel hopeless today, learn as if your life depends on it because there will come a day that's darker than this one, that's more challenging than this one, and you want to be able to bring a sense of possibility to those moments. And you can invest in that now. That's all I have to say on laughing at yourself and learning like your life depends on it. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a comment, drop a note, click the like, hit subscribe, share this episode with a family member or a friend or even a stranger or an enemy, anybody that you think might benefit from it. And I will see you all next week. That's TK's Two Cents for today. Peace.